Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have Dorcas in the studio. By the way, this is not my studio. This is Luna's studio and we are invading <laughs> Creative Academy. Okay, so we are in the Creative Academy studio. If you want to come and take any... Are they allowed to come and take pictures here? Yeah, we will. In oh, in June. In June. But you saw it here first. <laughs> in June, okay. All right. So what we are doing today is we're going to be creating a very, very shallow uh, portrait in the studio. So um, we're going to create a very soft light, very soft portrait, and we're going to be doing this with three lights. Um, I will, as usual, start, you know, lighting the scene one after the other with each light. So you guys will see what each light is doing. Um, but the main thing is, that if you want to capture like a very shallow portrait in the studio, you need a very fast lens. And what I have is a 51.2. So any lens that you have that is pretty fast. So if you have those specialty lenses, like the 0 0.95 or 1.2, 1.4, even 1.8, you can get like some really shallow portraits. But today I'm using a 51.2. I'm shooting with my Canon R5. But before we start doing anything, let me just show you what we have going on in the scene. So uh, I don't want to have like very contrasty light in the scene because of that I feel will take away from the softness that we are trying to capture, right? So the way you can get away with something like that is by using a very, very large light source. If you have a V-flat, I mean the V-flat by V-flat world, you can use it, but these are polyboards and we'll do the same thing. Even if you have like a white wall, you can position your subject really close to the white wall and you will still get the same effect. If you have like a large reflector, you can use a white side, the same effect. If you have like a shoot-through umbrella, six foot, seven foot, anything that is really, really large in relation to your subject. Because if you look at the size of hair and you look at the size of the area that we are lighting up, this is really large. So that's what's going to make the lights really soft. Another thing I can also do is bring this light really close to my subject. But if I do that, because of uh, the inverse square law, we will have like some dramatic shadows over there. So by moving, the polyboards a little further away, we give the light a chance to wrap around and also soften the shadows because I'm not using any reflector on this side because I still want to have some drama, but not like a lot that is going to make the shots very dramatic. So let me say it again. If I have this light source, which is a little bit, I think it's about what, four feet away from here, four or five feet. Um, this is just going to allow the light to wrap around. And these are like two polyboards that we've put together. So there's one over here, one over there. And it's just going to allow the light coming from the strobe to be very, very big in relation to our subject. So we will get very soft light. Then in the back, uh, because of how dramatic the shot is going to be, we have this light right here. And its job is just to throw light onto her hair so that when the background goes dark, we still have some separation or definition in her hair. Then we have our third light, which is hiding in the back right here. Its job is just to throw a little bit of glow in the back so that the background doesn't go too dark. Again, I will start shooting one light after the other so you guys will see exactly what is happening in the scene. So I think we're ready to start doing that. But the one point is so light. I know. Hey. I know. It's big but it's very light. I know. Anyway, so because we are shooting very shallow portraits, it means that the settings that we are using, especially for our aperture being 1.2, we are going to allow a lot of these house lights to show, but we don't want that. We don't want to influence our shots with these house lights. We want to have full control. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that our settings are cutting out all of these ambient lights. And with that, I'm shooting at 1 over 320 on the shutter speed f1.2 on the aperture and also ISO 50 so that we can darken our scene. So I'm going to take a shot right now. 
and as you can see it is dark i can go higher on my shutter speed if i want to darken the background or even increase my aperture from 1.2 to let's say 1.8 um, but again i want to get as much shallow depth as i can so keeping that at 1.2 is fine even though we have a little bit of contamination again it's not enough to really influence our shot so i, I will stick with this and i'm gonna take my trigger turn it on and right now the light that's going to go off is our hair light so yes please keep that pose beautiful as you can see we have this beautiful light that is coming from the top and lighting our scene now we need to see what our second light is doing and that is a light in the back so i'm going to turn that on and then we'll see what that does as well so in case you're wondering, I have grouped these lights into three groups. So there's group A, there's group B, and then there's group C, right? Yeah. So the group C light is the one going to hit the backdrop. The group B light is the hair light, and then group A is the main light. So on the trigger right now, my group B light is on one over two, five, six. My group C light, which is a speed light is on one over two, five, six point seven. So I'll take a shot. And I can see that we have some really nice illumination in the back. We're beginning to see some detail in there. And I like that gradation where we have a glow in the bottom part and it goes into dark. And then we have that light from the top, which is adding separation. So we're playing with like highlights, shadows, highlights. And that is really, really interesting for me. Now, the next thing we have to do is turn on our main light. And this is where we're going to really influence our shot. This is where we're really going to see our subject now. All those two lights were primarily to light up you know, certain parts of the frame. Now this is so that we can see our subject. Ooh, that's beautiful. All right, and as you can see, when all these lights are combined, we do have a very beautiful light on our subject. You can see it's really soft, it's wrapping around really nicely. I will make a little change because I want the light to still wrap around some more. So what I'll do is just reposition these boards to come a little bit more towards my side so we have more light hitting our subject. Okay, I think we I just want this one to come like here. Yeah. Maybe also let me move this somewhere here. I'll take another shot and hopefully this should give us a nice wrap around. Yeah, now you can see that by doing that we have really nice lights on our subject's face. It's a little bit punchy. I can decide to go down on that light a little bit but I feel like this is beginning to work in the areas that I like. So let me just go down on that light which is group A. Is that one over 32? So I'm just gonna go to one over 64.3 and take a shot. Ooh, I love the soft feel of this. So this is basically what studio lighting is about. Again, you have full control. You can change your settings. You can adjust anything at any point in time. And this is where you're able to, you know, add your personality, add your style, add things that you like, you know, and then create a portrait for yourself. So. Now that we have the lights dialed in, all I have to do is now just make sure I capture a beautiful shot of Dorcas, which is actually going to be very easy to do. So <laughs> um, let's just go ahead and then grab a few frames. Eyes back into the camera. Yeah, that's it. Nice. So one thing to note is when you have your lights almost to the side of your subject, if you have them turned away, they won't get the sweet light that you carefully created. So let's just do a demo. So look all the way to this side. Okay, that's too much. Like, look at, look at our videographer. <laughs> so you can see that we have like shadow. It is like an interesting portrait, but if you really want to get that nice light on the subject's face, let's just do the opposite where you look that way. Too much to look somewhere. Look at my hand right there. You see that now we have like that beautiful light on our subject. So that's one thing to note. I'll just go ahead and grab a few frames and that should be it. Kill it.
guys i hope you guys enjoyed what we did if you did let me know in the comments down below um yeah i think let me just recap and then show you everything that happened again so we created a very beautiful soft light on our subject by using two poly boards turning our light into it, spreading our light to create a very beautiful soft light on our subject. We have this rim light at the top to create separation, adding like a bit of highlight into her hair. We have one more light down here in the back to add a bit of glow onto our backdrop. And that was pretty much everything that went on. We also had a beautiful, gorgeous, yeah, Docus <laughs> in the shot and she made everything amazing. Thank you to the Creative Academy Studios, yes. Um, it's not open yet, but Charlie, you know your boy, access. <laughs> yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And remember, don't ever give up.